Ever wondered how the electric current in your main supply behaves? In reality, it does not move in a straight line through the wires. This video shall be answering this question and more. In so doing, we shall be exploring what phases are and discover that these phases allow us to reason much better about the current and voltage in the main supply that is currently powering all your appliances. Should you at any point feel the need to revisit any part of this video, feel free to rewind to the relevant part. Before we start talking about phases, we will begin by revising the basics of trigonometry. The basic functions are called the sine, cosine and tangent. These ratios are given as sine of x equals opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of x equals adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent x equals opposite over adjacent. The ratios assume a right angle triangle that is, one of the angles has a value of 90 degrees. The three sides of a right angle triangle are rated by Pythagoras' theorem. Hypotenuse squared equals opposite squared plus adjacent squared. Radians are a secondary measure of angles. What we need to know is that they satisfy the relation 180 degrees equals pi radians. A vector is a quantity having both size and direction. This is normally represented by an arrow pointing at the appropriate direction and whose length is proportional to the magnitude of the vector. We may view a vector as being made up of a horizontal and a vertical component. Assuming we are measuring angles starting from the positive horizontal, that is from east, we can find the length of these components. Using trigonometry, cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse equals x all over m. Therefore, x equals m cos theta, and hence we manage to find the horizontal component of the vector from its magnitude m and its direction theta. Similarly, sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse equals y all over m. Therefore, y equals m sine theta, and hence we manage to find the vertical component. A phase is nothing more than a fancy name for a vector concerning an alternating current or voltage. For now we may consider it as a rotating vector. The speed with which it is rotating is called the angular velocity, omega radians per second. Since omega is given in radians per second, from now onwards we shall measure angles exclusively in radians. The initial direction of the phaser before it begins rotating is called the phase angle, alpha radians. When alpha equals zero radians, the phaser is pointing due east. Let us consider a simple phaser having magnitude 1, angular velocity 1 radians per second, and phase angle 0 radians. If the phaser is rotated through a full revolution of 2 pi radians and its vertical component projected as shown, we will generate what is termed a sine wave. This is because m equals 1 and hence the vertical component will be equal to sine theta for all values of theta. What we have produced here is the standard sine wave, whose equation is y equals sine of t, where t is the time in seconds. This sine wave is vertically bound between minus 1 and 1. In other words, its minimum value is minus 1, while its maximum is 1. Since the angular velocity is 1 radian per second, the phaser takes 2 pi seconds to complete one revolution. Note that the periodic time is the time taken to complete one cycle, 
which in this case is 2 pi seconds. This can be understood in two ways. We may either view this as the time it takes the phaser to complete one revolution, or the time it takes the sine wave to complete one cycle. The two are interchangeable. Now let us look at the phaser having a different magnitude m. We can see that the phaser is represented by a longer arrow. This phaser is rotating with the same angular velocity and its vertical component is being projected as we've already seen. However, our new sine wave has been stretched vertically. This time, the minimum value is minus m while the maximum value is m. This number m is called the amplitude or peak value of the sine wave. The equation of the new sine wave is y equals m sine of t. Thus, a phaser having magnitude m produces a sine wave of amplitude m. We will now change the angular velocity of the phaser and reset its magnitude to 1. For the sake of this example, we will have an angular velocity of 2 radians per second. We can see that this new phaser rotates at twice the speed of the original on top. For the same amount of time, the new phaser has completed two revolutions and the sine wave has gone through two cycles in the same time period. Hence, the number of cycles in 2 pi seconds is equal to the angular velocity. The equation of this sine wave is y equals sine of omega t. We can see that the periodic time of the sine wave has been halved. This shows that as angular velocity increases, periodic time decreases. Another measure that is related to angular velocity and periodic time is the frequency. Frequency is defined as the number of cycles present in one second of the sine wave, or the number of revolutions in one second of the phaser. Since the angular velocity omega is the number of cycles in 2 pi seconds, while the frequency f is the number of cycles in one second, we may conclude that omega equals 2 pi f. The unit of frequency is commonly given in Hertz, capital H, small z. This shows that the angular velocity and the frequency are directly proportional. When one increases, the other also increases, and vice versa. The sine wave shown has a frequency of 2 Hertz, since there are two cycles in one second. Its periodic time is 0.5 seconds. It becomes obvious that the periodic time will always be 1 all over the frequency. Hence f is equal to 1 all over t. Let us take another example of a sine wave whose cycle takes 5 seconds to complete. Its frequency is given by f equals 1 all over t equals 1 over 5 equals 0 0.2 Hz. The phaser is now given a different phase angle, while the angular velocity and magnitude are both fixed to a value of 1. In our first example, the phase angle is pi over 6 radians. Vertical components are being projected as usual. The sine wave appears to be shifted to the left when compared to the original. 